Hello all. Hello viewers. Thank you for joining again on a Sunday, on a stacking Sunday. You might hear I'm still not completely healed from my flu experience. Yeah, let's call it the flu experience. Sounds like it's fun and something interesting. Well, interesting it is because I've never experienced one where I was lying in bed for so long, like a week or so. Well, let's uh, see what's on the hard drive again, because I'm eager to see if this is something quick, because I'm not that energized. What was it the last time? Um, a lot 15, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, we have this project here. I called it the Astro Forum project, but uh, that has already been stacked, obviously, because that was also a collaboration. NGC 3718, also stacked. Oh yeah, that's that nice galaxy in Ursa Major. It looks a bit like Centaurus A, at least. That's how I look at it. People from the Southern Hemisphere might cringe about me stating this, but yeah. Let's see, what do we have more? The Siamese Twins, I've definitely stacked the Siamese Twins, yes. Why did I do that? Because it was also one with a supernova in it uh, in May. It wasn't that detailed, but later on in the year I did it once more. Here it is. Yeah, and here I got much more integration time, so about 5 hours 24 minutes, that obviously is a lot more detailed than, uh, where was it, uh, the Siamese twins here. Let's look at the annotated version. So uh, it's also a bit uh, in a different orientation. Let me see if I switch this to the right. This is about the, orient oh, the orientation that uh, that other image has. Yeah, cool. Let's move on. The coma cluster. Did I do that? Hmm, I didn't do the coma cluster. Interesting. It's not really a small project, but uh, let's dive in and see what we can tease out of this image. I guess what we know what we need to do, right? We need to uh, stack them all, register them all, and then combine them again. Sounds like Lord of Rings, right? <laughs> ah. I think what we need to do is to uh, first go with all the luminance. There was no luminance data on this date, so we'll grab the luminance data from the second night. And let us also continue to gaze at the gain and the exposure length. I want them to be all the same for at least every individual color channel. So these should be all luminance. We name these coma L, as in this is the coma cluster. Let's, let's call it coma cluster, otherwise it sounds so medical, right? <laughs> uh, coma cluster L, uh, this is uh, about 26 times 60 seconds. So it's not that much data, but let's see. Go into the auto stretch. I'm not that familiar with this target actually. Uh, this was the 2600 again, so we're going to do that uh, wonderful workaround or cheat or stupidity, depending on how you look at it. So don't necessarily repeat me, but yeah, I've told this several times already. Open. Now I can start uh, pre processing. Okay, we'll go with this. Um, yeah, let's register it. Global star alignment, all is good. There we go. And then we can go into the plot. Is there anything outlandish to see? I see a sub here, which has, for some reason, a huge spike, or a, let's say a, a much bigger FWHM full width half maximum than the rest. Uh, 
there's this huge difference why why is that I can't really spot it as easily visible visually so this is the one with the high full width half maximum and this is the one with the lowest that's weird because ah oh, there's a little bit of star trailing now I see yeah 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 let's exclude this one and then the rest is pretty much good enough in my book oh wait there's also if I go to roundness one sub that is really off the charts in not being round so I can exclude that one too and is this one really bad nah oh. let's go with this so we call this uh, yeah I will leave this here um, all the naming con uh, stuff that I did is already there so uh, let's stack it and we will start to see hopefully why I actually shot this target the coma cluster I think it's uh, a huge galaxy cluster and uh, I, I see a, a lot of galaxies here and if I try to identify them by the plate solved then uh, yes indeed it's a lot of galaxies all huddled closely together so that's what this image is all about but this is only the luminance data so we're going to uh, do all the other stuff uh, later uh, we've saved it so we have now a cluster L stacked 26 times 60 seconds it's not completely accurate because we only saw uh, stacked 24 but we'll manage uh, let's go back to the conversion tab and I see we are now down to 87 gigs I could for instance uh, remove all files except the stacked one but no, I think we'll manage so let's get rid of this and we'll bring in the next channel let's go with R I like to stick to the letter um, order so I don't forget a channel in the end once again it's all 60 seconds gain 100 why did I go for 60 seconds actually so this will be not L but R and we now have 35 images of 60 seconds so we'll convert it and this time we need to find the red most recent flat let's uh, immediately go into this folder again and try looking up the William optics 81 click here space uh, not green red I shot that too on the 28th of May yep. start calibration uh, yeah. Re registration is next go register do we see any special things in the plot I see a few that jump downward in roundness so I think I go and only keep those that are roundest this looks good enough for me so we'll stack this 32 out of 35 there we go so that one is done as well let's go with the green channel again 35 but this time it's not r it is g calibration astrophotography yes. if, if only cyril would just return to the same folder which is already here once you click the uh, the open icon that would be so much more convenient because most of the time all those flats are in the same or about the same location it might be that this already works on uh, on other operating systems and that this is just a uh, an issue that is uh, specific to windows users but yeah it's a bit annoying that you continuously have to navigate from your home directory to other directories if you have pointed your calibration files from some kind of calibration library which I guess most people have so this is the full width half maximum again 
Let's go into the roundness. I think that says more. I'm going to just do a selection here around uh, this mark. So let's go with this. So the, then we have only blue to do if I counted correctly. There. And now we go with blue. Uh, blue, blue, blue. Oh no, I know I have that song in my head. Uh, B. Again, 35. Oh, I'm so consistent. Curious. Will there... Wow. Looks like it's going to be a clearish night. Perhaps I can go and play a bit with uh, a new toy. I got this one. And uh, I am really curious if this little box can do about the same things as uh, this little box. See, uh, it's about the same form factor. This one is a bit smaller. It also lacks one uh, DC port and it has one fewer USB port. So there is probably one of the reasons why it is a bit smaller. But yeah, I haven't booted it up yet. And I'm uh, getting blinded by the sun. Uh, ah, it's done, of course. Let's go into recombining those four stacks. We have now la luminance, la la la, la. <laughs> luminance, red, green, and blue. So let's bring those four stacks into the uh, into the equation. Why don't I have? Oh, <laughs> I go too quickly. I just only. Uh, what did we do? Only. Did we only, yeah, duh, we didn't even yet uh, calibrate it. I go too quickly, sorry. Let's calibrate with the proper flats. So William Optic, Shady One, Blue. There we are, yes, start calibrating. Uh, so calibration we now did. Let's go into registration. Roundness is pretty good. Full width, half maximum, okay-ish. Let's just stack them all. And that uh, that thing here in the middle, a satellite, probably, it will go away because when we stack things and we have the uh, algorithm set to pixel rejection with winsorized sigma clipping. The average will be taken from each pixel in the uh, end result and outliers of the uh, of the stack will be ignored. So this uh, this streak, the, the values of those pixels, yeah, well, it's gone. It, they will be ignored and as a result the streak of the satellite will be gone. So now we have four stacked files. Now we can go into adding those stacked files into a new sequence. So this will be comma cluster LRGB. I think what I first want to do is make sure that I get a even field of view, as in I don't want that gradient to be in those images as much as they are now. So I'm going to into background extraction and I'm going to apply this on the entire uh, sequence. And in order to do so, I need to put it into polynomial and I will put it in the degree order one, which is the least aggressive one. And I need it to uh, know some sample points. Um, I can just do generate here. I need to at least up the tolerance because I want, yeah, this is what I want. And I want to place the uh, checkbox at dither. Otherwise, you might risk running into kind of weird moray patterns that uh, that can exist. Let's first compute the background to see how much, how good a job it does. And it doesn't do a good job at all, as you can see. Uh, it leaves a uh, inverted uh, vignetting, you might uh, call it. Hmm. I think what is going on here 
is that I have some stacking artifacts. That's probably it. Yeah, if I go in histogram mode, I can more easily see it, especially here. See? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select not the entire image, but I'm just going to strip the edges of the image. So I do a crop and I do a crop sequence. So I do this for all the images in the sequence there. Okay. So we now have a cropped uh, file and uh, let's get rid of the histogram view and we'll go into background extraction once more. I'm going to stay within the, um, what is it, the RBF uh, me interpolation method. And I'm going to simply save this as BGX, like in, not GGX, BGX, as in background extraction. Save, yes, done. Go to number two and we'll do the same action here. So background extraction, generate, compute, give us a similar result. It does apply, save, and we call this BGX as well. La, the third one, background, generate, compute, apply, save, okay. And the last one, background extraction, generate, compute, looks good to me. And we can save this. Well, there was no real need for putting them into a sequence after all, but if I now look for BGX files, I have four of them, which I can once again add to a sequence. And then this time I will convert them into the uh, sequence. So now I have four files that still are not aligned to one each other. That's something we're gonna do right now. I'm not going to do any calibration again. I'm go just going to register against each other. And now we will have four registered files. And what we now can do is go into RGB compositing. I'm not shown this tool uh, before, I think, at least not in the Stacking Sunday videos, but this should theoretically allow me to uh, simple, simply uh, load up those uh, four files. Uh, the only thing is, I don't know which of these files is which. I'm going to go into pixel math. Why I go into pixel math? Not to actually do pixel math, but I'm going to load those four files, open them up, and now I also see which one is which. And I'm going to simply write it down. So file number one, two, three, four. Number one is, is this one, it's the B. Number two is green. And number three is the luminance. Then the last one is red. I could do the combination in, uh, in pixel math, but uh, in this case, I want to make use of the uh, LRGB tool. So what was the red one? Number four. Number four is red, and you can immediately see the screen pre-populated here. The green one was two, and blue was the first one. And we can use a luminance one, which is number three. Okay, and now we have something to do with the uh, color calibration still. So I can click color calibration here. I can... Uh, try and see if the data that is now already pre-populated is uh, correct. I think so. I can just press OK here. It should do the photometric color calibration. There we go. That's all good and nice. So red, green and blue has been mapped to the colors again and we have a luminance set of data for uh, the detail. So uh, this is our image. We see color again, although it was initially a set of monochrome files. I'm going to crop it once more. It's still plate solved. It seems to be misaligned a bit. Shall we do a new plate solve? It's in this menu, astrometry, image plate solver. 
now I see that those objects are all correctly identified. Is this a great image? Well, definitely not because, uh, well, it was too little data anyway and there were still some issues with the data as well and there is this weird structure here which is probably due to, I don't know, improper flats or something I didn't do right, I don't know. So there we have the final image. At least I'm not going to take it uh, any further because this video is already too long. And I hope I showed how to uh, combine LRGB images in a fairly quickly way to get to uh, a fairly pleasing image. Uh, and this uh, image of uh, all kinds of galaxies that uh, I see a spiral structure in here and there's lots and lots of galaxies here. I will put on the identifiers once more and some of these are very very far away as well. I think uh, this one here for instance looks pretty far away. If I uh, click on PSF and then on more details it usually brings me to the website of uh, Simbad, which will then tell me what that IC842 actually is. And it's actually a galaxy towards a group of galaxies, whatever that might be. <laughs> um, and it has also, also all kinds of information on it. Uh, if you are interested in getting details like this, then there's this other video that I once made about annotation in Cyril and other tools, which uh, tells you a bit more about how this uh, tool works, what you can learn from it and uh, how to uh, work with it. There's all kinds of things that you can, uh, can find out. It's, it's very, very intriguing. If you have uh, at least any idea of what all these numbers mean, and how to read into it, then uh, yeah. This is at least one thing that I think is interesting. So uh, distances are known for some of these objects. And this is in megaparsecs. So 104 megaparsec. A lot of light years. So this one is, I think, pretty far away. Let's wrap up this video here. Next uh, week, hopefully, uh, I have some more information about uh, this little device. I might have some time to, uh, to test it. Um, and I also should work on, <laughs> I keep st stating this, on my other videos. Yep, sorry, I'm neglecting them. I am uh, full on working on this stacking Sunday all the time, on a Sunday of course, and the rest of the week I am too occupied with other things. Last week it was with lying in bed. I was sick. Um, see you next time, thanks for watching and hope you'll have some clear skies. You can also tinker with your gear and work on fetching some subs and processing them in software like Cyril, which is highly advised or suggested or, well, I really like it, if that wasn't clear already. So thanks, see ya.